To make a simple skybox for rendering an environment map, start with Blender's default scene. Make sure it contains the default cube and the camera object. Move the cube out of the way for the moment to another layer. And then from the Add menu, add a UV sphere from the Mesh options. Leave the settings at their defaults and then open the View Properties panel. Here, from the Dimensions subsection, change the X, Y and Z axes by a value that increases the size of the sphere so it's at least three or four times larger than the cube. This is reasonably important, so unhide the cube on the layer it was placed and check its size relative to the sphere. Once everything checks out, Select the sphere and toggle into edit mode. Change the view so the scene is looked at from front on and remove perspective. This flattens the scene, making the next step easy to do. Deselect all to clear any current active selections and then using a box select, draw an area over the top half of the sphere. This can then be detached using the separate function splitting the object in half and creating an upper and lower dome. Once done, toggle back into object mode and change the size of the upper dome slightly so that it's larger than the lower and then reposition the two objects so they overlap in the middle. The next step is to then UV unwrap the domes. The simplest way to do this is to swap the outline of you top right for the UV image editor. Click New to access the new image properties. Provide a name, change the size and type, and then click OK to generate some initial data. Select the upper dome if not already selected and toggle into edit mode. Select all and then from the mesh menu unwrap. This will generate the UV map which will appear in the UV image editor superimposed over the previously generated image. Once done, select the lower dome and repeat the process. And this time from the UV image editor, click the button marked with a plus to access the image properties. Once available, select the lower dome and again toggle into edit mode. Select all and from the mesh menu unwrap. The UV map will appear superimposed over the image in the UV image editor. Once this is done, the next thing to do is to set up the materials. First, toggle out of edit mode, select the upper dome, click material properties, which will be empty, then new, give the material a name, then in texture properties, which will be empty as well, Click New again to generate some defaults, change the name, and then from the Image subsection, select one of the previously generated images, in this instance Sky. Check the mapping is set to UV, and then repeat the process. Select the object, Material Properties, New, change the name, Texture Properties, click New, change the name, and then assign the remaining image from the image subsection. The final option to then set is in Material Properties. In the Shading subsection, select both objects in turn and activate Shadeless, removing the influence of lighting and shading on the objects. The next item to set up is the cube as an environment box. As part of the default scene, material is already assigned, so simply change the name. Do the same in Texture Properties. And then whilst here, change the Texture Type to Environment Map. This activates a set of properties that can then be set. Click Static to generate a single image. Check Mapping is set to Cubic. Select the cube as the viewpoint object. Change resolution to alter the physical size of the image that's eventually rendered. And then back in material properties, again activate shadeless. 
Once the objects have all been prepped, the final step in render properties is to set the image format, in this instance, Targa RAW, before then making sure all the objects to be rendered are visible in the scene. Double check to make sure the environment bot is in the center of the scene before then selecting it and then clicking the render button. Blender will then switch to the image editor, process the scene, rendering front, back, left, right, top and bottom, the last one being the view from the camera. At this point, the generated data is in the render buffer and needs to be saved. To do that, from texture properties, scroll down to the environment map section and top right, click the downward pointing black arrow to access the save environment map option. In the file browser that opens, type a name, including the file extension .tga in this instance, before then clicking the Save Environment Map button top right. The map itself, shown open in an image editor, forms a grid 3 wide and 2 high. The resolution set earlier in the process relates to the height of the map. This means that each unit or section of the map is 512 by 512 pixels in height width. Maps can be rendered using different types of image data. To use bitmaps, first the texture properties will need to be changed to single image. This unlinks generated image data, which can then be replaced with a bitmap. Repeat the process for any objects that need to use bitmaps. Again, single image. Click the file icon to access the file browser. Select the bitmap and load the image into the texture properties channel. The advantage over generated data tends to be where transparency is needed, typically along the horizon of the skybox. To set this up, first in Material Properties, activate the Transparency property and change Alpha to 0. Then in Texture Properties, activate the Alpha Influence property under the Diffuse subsection. The combination of the two settings makes the diffuse color transparent and then allows the Alpha channel of the image to influence the object's transparency. Rendering the scene with this in place means the environment map will be suitably transparent where needed. So once the materials have been set up with transparency in mind, click the Render button in Render Properties to generate the environment map texture data. And then from Texture Properties, click the black arrow top right to access the Save Environment Map options. Type the file name in the file browser that appears including the file extension and save. With the map then open in an image editor, the areas masters transparent are rendered correctly.